Early one morning, Peter opened the gate and went out on a... On the branch of a big tree sat a little bird, Peter's friend. All is quiet, chirped the bird gaily. Soon, a duck came waddling around. She was glad that Peter had not closed the gate and decided to take a nice swim in the deep pond in the meadow. settled next to the duck and shrugged her shoulders. What kind of a bird are you if you can't fly, she said. To this, the duck replied, What kind of a bird are you if you can't swim? And dived into the pond. They argued and argued, the duck swimming in the pond, the little bird hopping along the shore. Suddenly, something caught Peter's attention. He noticed a cat crawling through the grass. The cat thought, the bird is busy arguing. I'll just grab her. Stealthily, she crept toward her on velvet paws. Look out, shouted Peter. And the bird immediately flew up into the tree. The duck quacked angrily at the cat. From the middle of the pond. The cat crawled around the tree and thought, is it worth climbing up so high? By the time I get there, the bird will have flown away. Grandpa came out. He was angry because Peter had gone to the meadow. It is a dangerous place. If a wolf should come out of the forest, then what would you do? Peter paid no attention to Grandfather's words. Boys such as he are not afraid of wolves. But Grandfather took Peter by the hand, led him home, and locked the gate. No sooner had Peter gone 
Then a big gray wolf came out of the forest. In a twinkling, the cat climbed up the tree. The duck quacked and, in her excitement, jumped out of the pond. But no matter how hard the duck tried to run, she couldn't escape the wolf. He was getting nearer, nearer, catching up with her. And then he got her, and with one gulp, swallowed her. And now, this is how things stood. The cat was sitting on one branch. The bird on another. Not too close to the cat. Wolf walked around and around the tree, looking at them with greedy eyes. In the meantime, Peter, without the slightest fear, stood behind the closed gate, watching all that was going on. He ran home, took a strong rope, and climbed up the high stone wall. One of the branches of the tree around which the wolf was walking stretched out over the wall. Grabbing hold of the branch, Peter lightly climbed over onto the tree. Peter said to the bird, fly down and circle around the wolf's head, only take care he doesn't catch you. The bird almost touched the wolf's head with her wings, while the wolf snapped angrily at her from this side and that. How the bird did worry the wolf. How he wanted to catch her. But the bird was clever, and the wolf simply couldn't do anything about it. Meanwhile, Peter made a lasso, and carefully letting it down, caught the wolf by the tail, and pulled with all his might. 
Feeling himself caught, the wolf began to jump wildly, trying to get loose. But Peter tied the other end of the rope to the tree, and the wolf's jumping only made the rope around his tail tighter. Just then, the hunters came out of the woods, following the wolf's trail and shooting as they went. But Peter, sitting in the tree, said, Don't shoot. Bertie and I have already caught the wolf. Now help us take him to the zoo. And now, imagine the triumphal procession. Peter at the head. After him, the hunters leading the wolf. Winding up the procession, Grandfather and the cat. Grandfather tossed his head discontentedly. Well, and if Peter hadn't caught the wolf, what then? Above them flew Bertie, chirping merrily. My, what fine ones we are, Peter and I. Look what we have caught. And if one would listen very carefully, he could hear the duck quacking in the wolf's belly because the wolf, in his hurry, had swallowed her alive. 